business running as usual under the shadows of forces. This after Gorkha Janamukti Mocha has given out a call for complete shutdown. Tourist hotspot Darjeeling slowly limps back to normalcy even as the standoff between Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee and the Gorkha Janmukti Mocha intensifies. It will be the biggest farm loan waiver ever, says Maharashtra government. Uh, Devendra Fadavis sets up a joint committee to decide the parameters of who will get the waiver and who will not. Mira now breaks it down for you. Congress complicity in Madhya Pradesh exposed. Three Congress leaders have been caught on camera now inciting violence. Will the party act against them? Trouble mounts for actor Sanjay Dutt. The Bombay High Court today asked the Maharashtra government to justify its decision to grant the actor an early release from prison. And cow vigilantes strike again, assault a truck driver and vandalize five trucks on the National Highway 15 over suspicion of cow smuggling. Investigations reveal all five trucks had all the requisite documents to transport cows between Jaisalmer and Tamil Nadu. Is our city rain ready as per the Mumbai civic body's deadline to fix the city nears to just three days from now? Mira now brings you a status report across the city. 67 roads still to be fixed. The monsoons are here. The work is not done. Bangalore stinks again. Over 4,000 sanitation workers are on an indefinite strike demanding regularization of their services. In the meantime, garbage piles up in the city. Panama-based cargo vessel uh, crashes into an Indian fishing boat off the Kochi coast, capsizing it, killing three fishermen. The captain and other crew members taken into custody. And U.S. President Donald Trump invites Prime Minister Narendra Modi for bilateral talks in Washington on the 25th of June and the 26th of June. This will be Modi's first trip to the U.S. under Trump's administration. And Rafael Nadal scripts history in the final with his win of the 10th French Open title. The Spaniard beat the world number three in straight sets to win his 15th Grand Slam title overall. Anil Kumble will remain as coach of the Indian cricket team until the West Indies series. BCCI's cautious reports of an alleged rift between the coach and captain Virat Kohli. Eight November 2016, in the evening at 12 o'clock, the price of 500 rupees. और एक हजार रुपये के करेंसी नोट लीगल टेंडर नहीं रहेंगे। From last seven months, loss of job has been gone, and the traders and the market person are saying that because of cash flow, less cash flow, they are facing loss of problem. And this is all because of demonetization. जब से नोट बंदी हुई है उस टाइम से उसके लिए जो भी काम थोड़ा बहुत हम लोग कर भी रहे हैं बाहर किसी पार्टी का या कस्टमर का तो ये कस्टमर भी काम लेके आ नहीं पा रहा है और दूसरी बात ये जो बाहर का भी हम लोग कुछ पार्टी का काम कर रहे हैं तो मतलब अभी कैश दे नहीं पा रहा है वो नोट बंदी के बाद से सर हमारा जो पैसा था ना मार्केट में सर वो पैसा अटक गया और ऊपर से जो माल आने वाला था ना बन के कोई ऑर्डर ही नहीं आ रहा है दो हजार का नोट चला दिया पचास रुपए की सौ रुपए की सौदा लेता है इंसान तो हम साढ़े उन्नीस सौ रुपया या साढ़े उन्नीस सौ रुपये कहाँ से थे तो इससे पर मारे मारे फिरते हैं दुकानदारों के पास जाते हैं बोले हमारे पास नहीं है छुपता तो ग्राहक चला जाता है हम ऐसे खड़े ले जाते हैं माले बहुत आगी बनती है हमारी ये कहा गया था कि काला धन पे अंकुश लगेगा काले धन पे हम लगाम कसेंगे मगर ऐसा लग रहा है कि यहाँ व्यापार पर लगाम कसा जा रहा है मजदूर तबके पर लगाम कसी जा रही है जब से ये नोट बंदी हुई है ना इसके बाद से तो मेरे आधे काम हो गए हैं और काम का पोजिशन ये है कि काम मार्केट में तो है ही नहीं और पैसे भी नहीं है हम लोग रोज अगर एक दस जोड़ी बना के लेके जाते हैं एक दो हज़ार हम लोग को मिल जाता है उस दो हज़ार में पंद्रह सौ रुपये मेटेरियल के लिए रखते हैं और पाँच सौ रुपये में हमारा घर हमारा बच्चों का फीस वो होता है तो हम लोग ए टी एम पे टी से इस्तेमाल करेंगे
there are several indicators we must talk about. The fact that it has been over six months since the massive demonetization move. The question we are asking is very, very simple. Has demonetization hit us hard? Has demonetization hit us hard? That's the question we're asking this evening. And we're doing a clear debate. Every guest will have the option, will have two minutes to make an opening statement after which there will be a buzzer that will go off. This is to ensure that everybody gets equal time to make their arguments on the channel this evening. Joining me, Gopal Krishna Agarwal, National Spokesperson of the BJP, Priyanka Chaturvedi, National Spokesperson of the Congress Party, Santosh Merotra is a noted economist, Saeed Furkan is a businessman and a trader, he's a member of the uh, Mumbai Central Market, Ashwini Kakar, CEO of Mercury Travels, brings in uh, you know also a businessman's voice, Chandrasekhar Naini is a senior expert in, e in economics and f economics and finance, I beg your pardon. And Pragnesh Rai is the owner of Sambar and Pub, who will also bring in um, the, uh, you know, the, the voice of the restauranters who, have, who claim to suffer greatly. I'm going to start uh, with Gopal Krishna Agarwal. Gopal Krishna Agarwal, has demonetization hit us hard? Your time starts now. So actually, demonetization was de definitely the uh, what has uh, hurt the people was the liquidity crunch, and that liquidity crunch was lasted only till December. It was November, December, and by January, the uh, the mon uh, economy was remonetized. So I don't think he, there is any issue after once the remonetization has taken place. Ma majority of the liquidity crunch which was being faced by the people have been remonetized. The thing is. There was a short-term pain and the long-term gain. That is what we have to focus now on. Demonetization will create a long-term gain for the economy. Ultimately, if we have to implement GST, GST is a big, big ticket reforms that the country has seen after so many years. That, that will create a big national agriculture market, benefit the farmers, so uh, reduce the indirect taxes, bring more uh, tax revenue collection, uh, increase compliance by the people and more money resources to the government. But GST could not have been implemented if all transactions were, uh, did not pass financial transaction, business transaction would not have passed through the banking channel. Therefore, demonetization was one of the important precursor to success creating a successful ecosystem for implementation of gst that's one important thing it's the long-term gain that we will have second thing is with the digital economy the cost of transaction in the economy will go down substantially we had done one study at present a banking transaction if a person <coughs> goes physically he has to spend 80 rupees per transaction. That cost is reduced to less than 60 paisa if that transaction happens through a banking channel. The third important thing is lot of money in the liquid cash was used right, you've run out by of time. the people to hold black money. That is also being uh, uh, hit okay. By okay, Gopal Krishna Agarwal, I, I, so demonetization it was an important precursor to GDP. All right, etc. They have to. to yeah, sorry, to GST. To GST. Demonetization was an important precursor to GST. That's Gopal Krishna Agarwal's argument. I just want to point out to our audience: India's GDP growth has actually has dropped. 1.6, uh, 1.5%. We agriculture has dropped a little over 1%. Manufacturing has come down uh, almost 3%. Electricity, gas, water supply down 1%. Construction down 6%. It's now in the negative. Services down 1.4%. Trade, hotels, transport is down uh, nearly 2%. Real estate is down about 1.1%. This is, these are all growth, uh, growth figures right now that are coming in. Priyanka Chaturvedi of the Congress. Demonetization was an important precursor to GST. Do you agree? Do you believe demonetization hit us hard? No, of course it hit us hard. Con considering how they've been changing their goalposts ever since demonetization was announced by the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister spoke about three goals that he had. Was eradicating black money, 
was eradicating uh, you know uh, dubious currency was eradicating terrorism we haven't seen anything happen then uh, during the up campaign we heard of how uh, you know a demonetization has helped india become a digital economy again if you look at the digital economy numbers it has actually fallen uh, where, where, where cashless economy is concerned you've just listed out all the growth uh, 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 factors that are down either down or in the negative that in itself has a story to tell the story to tell about demonetization so political gains that they have got out of it does not necessarily mean that the ec economy has gained joblessness growing unemployment the credit growth rate has fallen to a 63 year low banks have uh, spoken about it sbi has come out with its own report saying that it has hit them hard the gdp growth rate has slowed down from being the uh, you know the fastest growing economy in the world we've lost that tag to china so the government not acknowledging all these issues is a challenge in itself so uh, like i've listed out the various issues that demonetization has faced and we still don't have the numbers of the black money that they keep talking about being recovered rbi hasn't come and come forward with the figures if you look at how make in india totally uh, lost its entire uh, drive initiative because of the demonetization is another thing rural economy i think was the most hit and yet we don't talk about it the farmers in madhya pradesh are also speaking about how demonetization has hit them hard and the government has totally refused to acknowledge it even the state government so all the uh, you know unrest that you see whether it's with the farmers whether it's with the unemployment it at the end of the day is connected to the gst uh, to the demonetization my apologies all right to demonetization see and and it, you to our viewers right now i'm opening up our phone lines you can call us as well when the when the guests uh, when the panelists are done making their opening statements i want voices from uh, regular Indians who notice a difference in your workplace. If you run a business, do you notice a difference in your business? Do you believe that the that the economy is bouncing back? Do you believe it's going to take six months? That's the question I'm interested in. Let me take that same question to Santosh Mehrotra. Santosh Mehrotra, your opening arguments about demonetization. Your time starts now. Santosh Mehrotra, go ahead. Thank you, Faye. I think it's uh, fairly clear that 80% of all our workers are in the unorganized sector. Only 20% of our workers are in the organized sector. Now, the vast majority of those who are in the unorganized sector are dependent upon cash transactions. All transactions, whether they are inflows or outflows, take place on the basis of cash. So it is fairly well established now, the evidence has come in, that the organized sector of the economy was not so adversely impacted, but the unorganized sector of the economy, particularly agriculture, was very severely impacted by demonetization. As far as the, and I will come back to that in a minute, as far as the, the uh, benefits are concerned, I, I was saying six months ago that one of the great benefits that is likely to possibly result are increased tax revenue to GDP because people who are outside the tax net were now going to come into the tax net. However, the, the government of India has so far not released data about what additional tax revenue is going to get generated in this past financial year of 1617, though we know that about 10 million people, one crore additional people have filed returns. But my last point is about the impact on agriculture, which is what you have been discussing in the last uh, hour. We know that because of demonetization, the, the farming sector was very severely affected. Two, you had already had two years of drought and when the, you had a good year of rain in 2016 unfortunately the demonetization came so that prices collapsed and it is because prices collapsed uh, farmers who had taken loans were really hit extremely badly all right so farmers were hit really badly and i want to bring in the businessman's point of view ashwini gakar um, we know that business was subdued for everybody for the first for the quarter in question do you believe that there's been a recovery in the business that you run uh, with your colleagues with your social circle are people talking about the fact that jobs are back that things are looking buoyant or is it in the other way around do you believe as a businessman that uh, india was hit hard by demonetization 
Well, my overall view is that there have been some pros and some cons. Okay. Okay. So there's been some good things that uh, have come out of it and will continue to come out of it, uh, especially around tax avoidance and, you know, uh, terror funding being kind of... Uh, uh, squeezed a little bit and so on and so forth. But there's but still, the I mean, crucial, there's still stone pelting happening in Kashmir. Minutes, okay, all right, okay. So the crucial argument I want to make is that overall, for the whole year, uh, you know, if you look at the GDP numbers, the numbers that have now come in for last year say that we have lost almost one percent of GDP growth. Now, in a country where the GDP is two point two five trillion dollars. A 1% reduction in that GDP growth amounts to $25 billion in a year. This is a huge number. And that added to last year's base would have a multiplier effect in perpetuity. Hmm. So, you know, would have, for example, in the next year, a $2 billion impact of the event that happened in November last year. So these are very big numbers and I think <clears throat> that needs to be borne in mind. Uh, the other thing uh, that is very important is that interest rates should have come down dramatically because of demonetization, but they haven't come down by an iota in the last uh, at least uh, uh, two quarters. There's not much that has happened on the interest rate side. And just to give you one example, you know, uh, foreigners who came to this country, mm. they could not change more than 5,000 Indian rupees. The same foreigners were changing, for example, 4,000, 5,000, 2,000 US dollars each person. But they were not allowed to change more than 5,000 rupees. So that has a huge impact in multiple ways. And uh, I rest my case. Uh, with these few arguments. All right, huge, huge impact. And I also want to uh, ask Syed. Syed is also a businessman who represents uh, an entire group of businessmen. Syed, do you know that your business has improvement in the past two or three months? I want to talk a little bit about this channel. Like some point said, you are a kill or you are a kill. The government has आज जो इसका इंपैक्ट हो रहा है डिमोनेटाइजेशन का ये जब बातें हुई और इसको जब लागू किया गया तो ये कहा गया था कि ब्लैक मनी जो बाहर से है या जो ब्लैक मनी देश के अंदर है या जो टेरर ग्रुप है वो जो यूज कर रहे हैं ऐसी नोटें वो बंद होगी उससे बहुत इंपैक्ट होगा बट ऐसा कुछ दिखाई नहीं दिया उसका असर उल्टा ये हुआ कि जो स्मॉल स्केल इंडस्ट्री थी जैसे कि जो मिडिल क्लास तबके के लोग अपना मैन्युफैक्चरिंग का कारोबार ट्रेडिंग का कारोबार कर रहे थे वहां पर डिमोनेटाइजेशन की बहुत बड़ी मार पड़ी वो लोगों को आज ये पोजीशन है मुंबई शहर में हो या पूरे इंडिया में कोई भी ऐसा सिटी हो कोई भी फील्ड हो उस फील्ड में वहां के लेबर प्लान कर चुके हैं यहां से जा चुके हैं सिटी छोड़ रहे हैं वो काम छोड़ रहे हैं जिनके मैन्युफैक्चरिंग फैक्ट्री में छोटी मोटी जो फैक्ट्रियां होती थी जहां 50 लेबर थे वहां अब 10 लेबर बचे हैं कैश का फ्लो है नहीं और जो कैश के फ्लो भी थे वो सारी चीजें रॉ मटेरियल में आपके पास अगर कैश फ्लो आ रहा है तो आप रॉ मटेरियल में देते हैं तो लाइट बिल भरना है रेंट देना है फिर सैलरी देना है ये सारी चीजों को किसी तरीके से मैनेज नहीं कर पा रहा है कोई भी और बहुत ज्यादा मार पड़ रही है सरकार को इस पर ध्यान देना चाहिए इनकी तैयारी नहीं थी इन्होंने ये कदम उठाया पहले तैयारी करनी चाहिए थी जिस तरीके से आधार कार्ड से कनेक्ट करने के लिए आज कई सालों से आधार कार्ड से कनेक्ट करने के लिए देशवासियों के लिए एक बहुत बड़ा टाइम दिया गया पहले इन लोगों को भी टाइम देना चाहिए था हम लोगों के हिसाब से बड़ी बड़ी बातों बातों से देश का उद्धार नहीं होगा डिमोनेटाइजेशन अच्छी चीज है मगर अच्छी चीजों में उसका इम्पैक्ट हो तो अगर गरीब मारा जा रहा है गरीब का कारोबार बंद हो रहा है देशवासियों को तकलीफ हो रही है तो इसका इम्पैक्ट बहुत बुरा होगा आने वाले दिनों में और आने वाले दिनों में आप देखेंगे कि बेरोजगारी और ज्यादा बढ़ती जाएगी और यो टू मिनट सर आप ये मुझे आपसे ये पूछना है सहयोग जी आप मुझे ये बताइए कि बेरोजगारी की जो बात कर रही है आप बस आपकी इंडस्ट्री या बिजनेस में है या अक्रॉस द बोर्ड जितने भी एस एम ईज आपकी बातचीत तो हुई होगी आप क्या हो रहा है आप सब जगह जाइए आप बुनकरों के पास जाइए जो पावर लूम की फैक्ट्री से जुड़े हुए हैं या जो मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कर रहे हैं या जो दरदोजी का काम कर रहे हैं आप उन लोगों से पूछिए सब लोग घर जा चुके हैं वहाँ उनके पास काम ही नहीं है अगर काम नहीं है तो वो सीधे सीधे अपने घर जा रहा है और वहाँ जाने के बाद भी उनको कोई काम नहीं मिल रहा है तो ये बेरोजगारी तो बढ़ती जा रही है दिन ब दिन अब दिखाने के लिए कुछ चेहरे और दिखाए जा रहे हैं बट एक्चुअल में हकीकत 
एक अलग है एक अलग तस्वीर होती जा रही है भारत की उसको समझना और देखना खास तौर पर मीडिया चैनलों के माध्यम से एक्चुअल पिक्चर भारत देश की लोगों के सामने रखनी जो जरूरत है आज नेशन की वो बहुत जरूरी है कि एक्चुअल पोजीशन क्या चल रही है पूरे देश में उसको सामने रखा जाए गोपाल कृष्ण अग्रवाल इनके जवाब दे दीजिए द द लॉस ऑफ जॉब बेरोजगारी जो विच इज करेंटली इन द एस सेक्टर द स्मॉल बिजनेसेस हुआ हैविंग ट्रबल पेइंग देयर बिल्स एम्प्लॉइंग पीपल कीपिंग देयर ऑफिस ओपन बिकॉज ऑफ डिमोनिटाइजेशन वॉट रिस्पॉन्स डज द गवर्नमेंट है देखिए लोगों को यह समझना पड़ेगा कि इतने 125 करोड़ से ऊपर के हमारे देश की जनसंख्या है द पॉपुलेशन विच इज़ सो ह्यूज देर कैन नॉट बी गवर्नमेंट जॉब और प्राइवेट सेक्टर जॉब्स एलोन विच कैन फिल द न्यू एंट्रेंट्स पीपल विल हैव टू डिपेंड ऑन एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप दे हैव टू डिपेंड ऑन सेल्फ एम्प्लॉयमेंट इतना पेन ना हो कि देशवासी जो आपके सरकार से जो उम्मीद लगाए बैठे थे जो बड़े बड़े अभिभाषण सुन रहे थे कि हमको बहुत बड़ा फायदा होगा अच्छे दिन हमारे आएंगे हम उस अच्छे दिन का इंतजार कर रहे हैं सर हम गवर्नमेंट के फैसले के खिलाफ नहीं आप हमारी बात समझिए उसका इंप्लीमेंटेशन जिस तरीके से हुआ no, उसको you know, जिस तरीके से इंप्लीमेंट किया गया वो गलत था गोपाल कृष्ण अग्रवाल जी बोल रहे थे कि यू वांट यू वांट एंटरप्राइज यू वांट ऑन्टरप्रीनियरशिप ये तो ऑन्टरप्रीनियर ही है सर गोपाल कृष्ण अग्रवाल दिस जेंटलमैन इज एन ऑन्टरप्रीनियर ही सेइंग ही इज हैविंग ट्रबल रनिंग हिज बिजनेस सो व्हेन यू से द जॉब्स आर गोइंग टू कम फ्रॉम ऑन्टरप्रीनियर्स एंड ऑन्टरप्रीनियर्स आर स्ट्रगलिंग वेयर विल द जॉब्स कम फ्रॉम जी गो अहेड गो अहेड नो अब दैट्स व्हाट आई एम टेलिंग that it uh, we have given us a mudra loan of 7.545 crore people every loan is 50000 to 10 lakh and Sir. at least if one establishment happens it will give at least uh, employment to four to five people that's one thing then another thing is that we have given start up stand up 2.5 lakh loans to the rural Sir, and agricultural sector loan की बातें आप कर रहे हैं अच्छी बात है ठीक है लोगों को फायदा हुआ होगा बट आप जमीन पे उतरिए आप अपने लोगों को जमीन पे उतारिए और पता करवाइए कि एक्चुअल पोजीशन क्या है इंडिया में और लोग किस तरीके से सरवाइव कर रहे हैं आप एक भारतीय आम नागरिक की जो एक छोटा कारोबार करने वाला है आप उसके दर्द को समझिए दर्द को इतना मत बढ़ाइए कि वो अपनी अपना दम तोड़ दे जिस तरीके से किसान दम तोड़ रहा है Well, let me just bring in some numbers here. I have with me the diversified industry. This is the let domestic fund let based me, outstanding. Let, let me, let There's me, negative let for let telecommunication. Complete, negative. Let, let, uh, let me answer her. Okay. Him. Okay. Go ahead. Let go me ahead. give me one minute. Sure. The go ahead. The important thing is I have not finished. The issue is that you we uh, the agriculture sector has shown a growth. Ultimately, from where the employment come, it it. it we have done if you look into the macro economic parameters all have improved inflation has come down to 2.6% today if the inflation from double digit to 2.6% अग्रवाल जी हमारी रिक्वेस्ट वही है आंकड़ों से उतर कर आइए जमीन पर प्रैक्टिकली आंकड़ों पे बात नहीं होगी देश डेवलप नहीं करेगा आंकड़ों में जवाब दूंगा ना अब आप बोल दीजिए यू टॉकिंग अबाउट इन्फ्लेशन हैज कम डाउन यू टॉक अबाउट मुद्रा लोन मिस्टर अग्रवाल गो हेड मिस्टर अग्रवाल गो हेड Uh, then uh, if you see how the uh, uh, macro economic parameters are now the fiscal deficit is under control to 3.5% revenue deficit will be surplus ultimately the question between debt and investment is a question how revenue deficit is managed if you talk of economics we will talk of economics if you talk of other things we have ultimately we have created infrastructure the way roads uh, 131 kilometers of road is being constructed on a daily basis in rural areas that was 30 kilometers it has increased from 30 to 131 kilometers the road main highways were uh, have con uh, start uh, being constructed at 30 kilometers a day who will benefit out of this इंश्योरेंस कवर प्रधानमंत्री जीवन सुरक्षा योजना प्रधानमंत्री गोपाल कृष्ण अग्रवाल आई एम रीडिंग आउट ऑफ वॉट इज कॉल्ड दी एस बी आई इको रैप दी एस बी आई इको रैप 
SBI being the biggest PSU bank, the biggest bank in the country, government puts bank. government bank puts no. out an economic wrap where it puts out its data on what the the market looks like. This eco wrap of SBI is titled GDP slowdown pre or post demonetization. That is what it called. It actually points out that agriculture is expected to, and not through GDP, but through something called GVA. Viewers, GVA is the gross value added. How much value have we added as a country? It is expecting agriculture to come down, industry to come down, manufacturing to come down, electricity to come down. Construction is in the negative, according to SBI. Trade hotels, transport to come down, real estate to come down. Now, I don't know where uh, Mr. Agarwal is getting his numbers from. But if we look at, for example, this is how much banks are lending. And if businesses have to do well, they have to borrow from banks and do business. That's how business functions. There is no indication whatsoever in this business borrowing to tell us that the market is getting better. It is actually looking like it's getting worse. I don't want to call out numbers because they're difficult to understand on television. But they're all here and we can email them to Gopal Krishna Agarwal. Sarkari Bank ne bola hai. Very good. And I just, want, I just want to open this up now to the rest of the panel. Priyanka Chaturvedi. Priyanka Chaturvedi. Area of worry. It is very worrying, Mr. Gopal Krishna Agarwal. And our phone lines are buzzing. We'll patch people through. Priyanka Chaturvedi, go ahead. Priyanka Chaturvedi, go ahead. Has the BJP inherited demonetization? I think we're getting yeah, a little I, confused about the okay, arguments. Mr. Right Agarwal. No, no. We have inherited the no, bank Mr. problem. Mr. Agarwal was making a point about mudra loans and how they've made it easier. Please, Mr. Mr. Agarwal, please don't find excuses for your failures. You have not shown any kind of visionary uh, uh, growth or visionary governance or visionary model that would take the India towards a growth trajectory. No, no, see, Priyanka, focus on, pre so he focus on demonetization. So he's loans for small businesses without... Yes, I'm focusing on demonetization and please understand demonetization came in as a, uh, uh, you know, that, that was one of the reasons that the Prime Minister quoted that it would take India towards growth trajectory if they move towards a cashless digital economy. Let's not forget that. Now, we were questioning them about creating new businesses. He was talking about entrepreneurship. Now, the current entrepreneurs are jobless, are, are facing a huge mess, have had to, uh, you know, let go of many of their staff. And he's talking about providing mudra loans. Here's an entrepreneurial setup, a small business, which was wanting to move into a second phase of growth, which has come to a standstill just because of the demonetization. And you're talking about mudra loans and we are going to create more businesses. The existing businesses are facing an existential challenge. And we are talking about mudra loans anyway. That's another part. Then he talks about how GDP uh, is, is, is positive and everything's hunky-dory. So all the current account deficit that he talks about has also benefited because of the falling crude oil prices, the benefit of which the people of the country have not received. So there are many factors when he talks about economics, when he talks about agriculture. Agriculture has not done well because the government has supported the farmers. Agriculture has done well because they had good monsoons this year. And unfortunately, the farmers are protesting simply because of the demonetization that they brought in and the government not willing to buy their produce. So this is what is happening. If he wants to talk about economics, we can talk economics. But you know, these fast data does not help. You know, I want to bring in, uh, I want to bring in now Chandrasekhar Naini who joins us at this point. Chandrasekhar Naini, uh, Mr. Gopal Krishna Agarwal mentioned that inflation is down to 2.18%. This was the last number. It would be very worrying if inflation, if our GDP number was going down and inflation was going up. So obviously inflation is also going to go down. Chandrasekhar Naini, where do you stand on the argument that demonetization yes, has hit us hard? Are you for or against? Yes or no? Yeah. No, I am, I am not uh, agreeing with that uh, factor that demonetization has hit us hard. We have to realize why was demonetization done. There was a horrendous proportion of black money in our economy. There was a terrorist funding going on at full, full blown. This needed to be corrected. Also, India needed to move into the next century of the digital age. These three things, these three factors actually pushed the government to take this bold step, which by the way, no earlier government, actually no uh, Congress government has ever taken the bold step, although it was needed many a times in past. The bold step was taken, the effects were seen, and what we are seeing now, let me compare it with the situation. Black money, even Congress has agreed, black money is like a cancer to our economy. The cancer has to be corrected, 
there are only one or two ways in which cancer can be corrected. One of the ways is chemotherapy. Demonetization is like chemotherapy. Uh, think of it in this way. If there is a tumor of cancer, and if the tumor is cut, definitely the weight of the body reduces. That is what has happened to the GDP. What we are talking about, the loss of 1% in the GDP. By the way, it is 1% and not 2% as Manmohan Singh and Amartya Sen has yes, predicted. The prediction didn't come true. The 1% the actually the tumor being removed. I also must okay. tell you, the sectors which have been hit by demonetization are mainly real estate sector, which is actually having a lot of black money transaction in that sector. Second sector which has been hit is mining, which again is a lot of black money in the sector. Third sector which has been hit is the unorganized sector, wherein unorganized sector, everybody knows in this country that there is no kind of proper accounting so, in the unorganized sector. Finish. So definitely the reduction is because of the black money which has been curtailed. And that's why many people are crying that demonetization is hitting us hard, because many times they were doing transactions which were not affecting any and this is now since the transactions have come into the real and uh, uh, proper legal era, government's tax revenues will go up. And those are the effects which we'll see in the coming quarter. All right. That's my Okay, prediction. okay. Uh, so so I, I I have a couple of things to ask about the points that were just made by Mr. By Mr. Neni. Uh, one, yes. are we talking black money or cash money? See, because if somebody was buying yeah. vegetables out of cash, that is not necessarily black money. Yes. We were using cash for transactions. Point no. number two, you said terror funding. Yeah. Has terror funding actually come down? Yes. Has stone pelting in Kashmir yes, actually come down? That's a question yes, we have because, to ask. No, no. Also, you said the, the effects of demonetization Kashmir, are easily visible. We do not know from the RBI the, how much money has been collected. We do not know month, how much black money has been you know, taken out of the system. We also do not know how much hawala money went out of the country. And I have, uh, you know, I have reason to understand that a lot of people now are not holding their black money anymore. They're moving it out of the country through Hawala routes immediately because they never know when this will happen again. Uh, Mr. Ashwini Kakar, here is the problem. If we say everybody suffering was corrupt to begin with, so they deserve suffering. Do you agree? See, uh, Mr. Naini himself in his own arguments have said that most of the sectors have virtually vanished. You know, uh, if mining has vanished, real estate mining has vanished, vanished, textile, leather. I mean, I can we can add to I your list, Mr. Naini, and explain that you know half the half the economy, the small and medium enterprise, the cash-based rural economy, the unbanked, the illiterate sections of society, and so on, have really suffered hugely. Uh, we fully agree that you know uh, there has been uh, you know uh, 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 an attempt to curb corruption that has been partially successful I, I mean quite successful i must say but can that uh, is it strong enough to stop corruption from starting again which is what is a is a big question mark in any case the amount of credit card transactions has gone up by six times and I am afraid that as a country, we cannot afford credit card transactions to go up by six times because the cost of each credit card transaction in terms of money taken out of the country by Visa and MasterCard and all these companies is 2% of whatever is spent on the credit cards. So I think, you know, we have to review this whole thing in its totality. I think in terms of, uh, you know, reducing tax avoidance, very good. I think this is uh, something that will uh, long term have an effect. But like I said before, we have lost in your own admission, you said that we have lost more than 1% of GDP growth, 1% of our country's GDP growth, 1% is $25 billion a year. So that is what we have lost in the past year. And going forward, the multiplier effect on that will be at least $2 billion per year in the coming years to come. Right. And I, I, know, I want to ask Sayed this. Sayed, you know, they said that the corrupt business was the same. They said that the corrupt business was the same. They said that the chemotherapy was the same. They said that the chemo was the same. तो कीमोथेरेपी का एक सिस्टम है कीमोथेरेपी अगर पार्ट दूसरे पार्ट पे दे दिया जाएगा ना तो कैंसर दूसरी जगह और फैल जाएगा तो सही जगह पे कीमोथेरेपी होनी चाहिए एनालॉजी ऑफ कीमोथेरेपी वाज इन फैक्ट या सही कीमो होगी तो वाज नॉट राइट बिकॉज़ व्हाट वी डिड वाज एक्चुअली चॉप स्टफ ऑफ व्हिच वाज नॉट कीमोथेरेपी आई आई वांट टू स्टॉप यूजिंग दैट मेडिकल एनालॉजी ऑलटुगेदर आई थिंक इट्स मिसलीडिंग प्रग्नेश राय इज द ओनर ऑफ सैंबार एंड पब एंड किचन ही रिप्रेजेंट्स रेस्टोरेंटर्स राइट नाउ प्रग्नेश आई वांट टू अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम यू has the restaurant business and let me point out one thing 
real estate, construction, leather, mining, restaurants, these are massive employers. Government. Lots of people work in these sectors and lots of unofficial labor works in these sectors. And if they get let off, who's going to employ these people? Someone who works on a construction site is not qualified or skilled to work anywhere else. Where will he go? I want to ask Pragnesh this question. Do you think that demonetization has hit the restaurant business hard? What has it costed us in terms of jobs? In terms of demonetization, starting November 8th, it was a harsh three months. Mm. But uh, if we speak layo uh, layoffs or people being let go, uh, it has taken us a hit. But uh, six months down the line now, uh, we've uh, slightly come out of it. Uh, yes, there were a few initial troubled months, but uh, as we've moved on, things have regularized, business has started to come in again. Just your modes of payments have increased and smaller vendors who literally uh, we procure from, they are facing issues in terms of getting uh, themselves organized. So I feel that's where uh, demonetization has taken a, uh, re restaurant business has taken a hit in demonetization in these small terms. Business-wise, uh, the first three months were really slow. December being one of the peak times of restaurant business was also on the slowest slide if you compare it to the last two years. But as months have gone by, six months, seventh month down the line, it seems to be getting regularized. We haven't personally let go of people. Uh, it's all a matter of uh, a little bit of faith that is required in the government and in things getting regularized. There were initial tough times, but I think we've conveniently come out of it at this point. Okay, come out of this at this point. That's heartening to know. Uh, I, wa I want to bring in Gopal Krishnagarwal, Priyanka Chaturvedi. I, it's Santosh Mehrotra, I'm sorry, I didn't come back to you. Santosh Mehrotra, the argument, and you know, um, uh, Ashwini Kakar is making an excellent point. 1% of the GDP is not as tiny as it sounds when the media says 1% of the GDP. It's a lot of money. Of course, it's a lot of money. And it's unfortunately a lot of money of those who can least afford it because the sector as Mr. Naini himself was rightly pointing out that was most impacted were those who were in the unorganized sector meaning those who are in who are self-employed or micro or small and medium enterprises who operate on the basis of cash and now so we have to see what is the juncture at which demonetization hit the economy and hit these relatively poorer people we have already seen that job growth had dramatically been falling over the last five years. I think there is plenty of evidence to that effect from the Labor Bureau data based on very large samples. And that is indisputable. This is point one. This was the context on the 8th of November. And when demonetization came, Please note that those few people who were, who, those who were in jobs, who were in the unorganized sector, they were let go. Now, it may well be that with liquidity returning, those people will return to jobs. But I think what we need to recognize is that the growth rate has been, has been lower this year by, of, of gross value added by one and a half percentage points. And that's the context provided for, this, for the falling number of growth in jobs at a time when the number of young people who are joining the labor force in the last five years has been growing at 5 million per annum. You see, in the period from 2004-05 to 11-12, the economy was growing fast, jobs were growing fast, and few people, fewer people, only 2 million people per annum were joining the labor force. As a result, real wages rose and poverty fell. In the last five years, on the contrary, you've seen that because non-agricultural jobs have not been growing, but the number of people joining the labor force has been growing by about 5 million per annum. Despite the fact that inflation has come down, the point is that nominal wages are not rising and therefore real wages are not rising. People do not, you know, people go on and on about how inflation has fallen. Are, if inflation has fallen, the real issue is, GDP. have nominal wages risen faster than inflation? No. Which is the reason, which, and why is that? Because jobs are not growing. And demonetization came at that juncture. This is what people need to understand.
All right, so we're going to open up the phone lines right now for our viewers, but I just want to bring in Gopal Krishna Agarwal and uh, Priyanka Chaturvedi on this one question. The fact that there is a lot of argument about the fact that we're slowing down. Gopal Krishna Agarwal, Priyanka Chaturvedi, we must take a moment to talk about terror funding and uh, to talk about stone pelting in Kashmir because that was one of the things that demonetization was going to hit at. Have we solved the problem, Gopal Krishna Agarwal? Has terror funding actually come down? Has stone pelting actually come down? No, we... Everything what is happening to economy or the country cannot be linked to demonetization. Every good thing cannot be linked. We cannot link every good thing that it is because of demonetization. Same way, every negative aspect of the economy or there are issues which this are concerned. The goal of demonetization. This was one of the reasons. Of demonetization. This was one of the reasons why we did it. Was not an isolated steps. Demonetization. Yeah, demonetization was several issues. We you see in the Benami Property Act. You see in the in, in the uh, income disclosure scheme. There uh, is special uh, SIT was set up, uh, bilateral treaties with Mauritius, everything. They, there are so many issues that we are trying to tackle the corruption and black money issue. Sir, how many people have been in jail in SIT in these days? The Kuyat leaders, where they have tried to unearth the terror funding. No, terror, uh, demon, uh, liquid currency in the economy was one of the... How many people have been in jail in the economy? How many people have been in jail? It was not the... कितनी what was happening was that the liquid currency or the currency in uh, flow was being used by terrors and fake currency was being used by pakistan to influx in our uh, uh, country those at least have been checked now there there are liquid currency has been reduced there is a fake currency issue of fake currency has been reduced ultimately of uh, terrorism is a big step a big issue which cannot again, uh, only be tackled through demonetization nia has uh, uh, done raids on 28 centers of huriyat where uh, through even bad they were funding terrorism through banking channels also okay okay priyanka chaturvedi priyanka chaturvedi was helping in terror funding priyanka chaturvedi was one of the issue okay. banking uh, channels uh, were also I, being I don't used know. Uh, there was NGOs I, I don't know which were if being any used. of the All panelists. All these have to be tackled. We are doing it. Right, any right. of the panelists would even would even would would even would even be convinced by what uh, Mr. Agarwal is saying. The facts speak for themselves, and we are seeing how a growing unrest has only grown larger in proportion uh, post demonetization, and it doesn't just end at Kashmir. We also have an internal Naxalite movement. We just had uh, our own, uh, you know, uh, men, uh, army men. I'm sorry, uh, not army men, but our BSF jawans being shot at and killed by these Naxalites. So when we have a situation like this uh, uh, happening, not just coming from Pakistan but internally, these are ch questions that the Bharatiya Janata Party needs to be honest about and should be answering. So saying that we have managed to clamp down and not everything can be linked to demonetization, I would just like to remind Mr. Uh, uh, Agarwal that we did not link demonetization to terrorism. It was the Prime Minister who promised us a terrorism-free India post demonetization. So these are some questions that they will need to uh, obviously answer. And again, they don't have an answer, and I'm sure every other panelist. Is He's absolutely not convinced with what the BJP is saying. Help in curbing terrorism. terrorism sir, sir, you finish terrorism. The whole country is with you. But the situation in which India is facing people, the people who are small scale industry, what is the way to do it? What is the way to do it? The demonetization is a little terrorist funder. Do it all. The whole country is with you. But the things you have done for other things, what happened to those things? How many people got caught? How many people got caught? How many people got caught? That's a good question, Nero. How many people have been given to you? 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 I want to bring in a caller right now. Murlidhar is on the phone line from Bangalore. Murlidhar? Yes, 
we can hear you yes. go ahead yes 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 you see i agree with that mr uh, economist mr mehrotra saying yes uh the totally the juncture at which it was brought in mm. was not acceptable it has taken the money out of 100 crores of people for a period of few many months just to bring out black money from few lakhs of people who have somehow managed to hold it too now what is the outcome of that we do not know but the impact of that we know today is uh, inflation ratings on agriculture i mean uh, vegetable sector showing is not at all matching to the ground reality what is happening the purchase capacity has been taken out of the businesses smes as a result lot of unemployment has happened when people are unable to buy naturally there is no demand creation no credit of take and you have to take it as a toll on account of demonetization but the morality or moral stamina with which it has, uh, it has been done has to be appreciated to the extent yes terror funding have been stunned for few min- few months at least but we are not sure that it will come up again it is a question of printing a duplicate note it mm. can happen any time on any notes people have printed us dollars also the question now is how government is going to open up the gates of money yes by taking up huge infrastructure projects and increasing right. the inflow and increasing the employment right and you know uh, uh, mr budhi that is right i also want to put out one more thing that nobody has mentioned up until now nearly 180 people died during the demonetization process several of them were senior citizens several of them were senior citizens who were standing in line no one has acknowledged these deaths nobody has has even treated this like it was a, it was a thing that actually happened somebody needs to acknowledge these people what happened to those families has the government gotten in touch have we compensated in any way have we even sent a condolence letter saying that we are sorry you lost a loved one has there anything that has been done gopal krishna agarwal do you want to answer that question you know uh, uh, if you, uh, they are all uh, unfortunate but you cannot link all debts to the demonetization ultimately there are some positive steps also if you see the people have supported wholeheartedly the demonetization you're, you're not process. answering my question the people what no no you see, see that you know, okay let, let me see i know okay gopal krishna agarwal gopal krishna agarwal let me make one thing clear i am not questioning the fact that people have supported demonetization they still do do people want terror to stop yes do people want black money to stop yes do we want people who uh, who take money out of our country into the swiss bank accounts to be caught do we want that money to be brought back Yes do we want rich corrupt businessmen to be taxed to pay their income tax like the rest of us yes we are asking now about hard numbers we do not want to know about emotion do people support do people not support doesn't matter anymore it has been 6 months you yourself on this very channel on this very show 6 no, months ago you said give it 6 months you will be able to see the impact to, now fair, give me the impact you... in numbers i want the impact in numbers no what i want to tell you yes i will tell you what happens is if you want to catch the corrupt people if you want to catch remove the eliminate the black money from the system you have to establish an audit trail on the for trans, uh, business transaction demonetization has been a major step towards creating an audit trail of the money which moves through the banking transaction banking channels which moves through the business transaction unless you have, we have uh, sent more than 90 lakh uh, 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 tax uh, uh, trail reh jayegi why because people business people mar jayega trail reh jayegi sir establish the audit trail for the black aaj bhi jali currency pakli ja rahi hai nahi dekhiye aaj bhi jali currency pakli ja rahi hai right nahi aaj agar you have to decide whether right, right. Suresh, black okay. money and corruption is a bigger let me let me point out to you i'm still reading from the domestic fund do. outstanding Ultimately, engineering is down 25% petro petrochem is, is down 15% textiles is down 5% trade is down 1.9% uh other infrastructures down 9% roads and ports down 15% telecommunication down 12% this is how much these sectors are borrowing and if they are not borrowing it means they're not conducting business suresh is on the phone line from tamil nadu suresh go ahead ma'am abhi ab abhi ab bol rahe the ki various sectors is down by 
so much and so much. Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you, Suresh. Go ahead. Yeah, various sectors is down by so much. So I think we are going through a very difficult phase. First, mm. the demonetization. Second, the GST, which is But I think it is a kind of a bull which takes four steps backward to race. I think, I mean, in coming quarters, after demonetization and GST put together, Like the the last quarter, the final quarter of the 2017 will be very good. I am a calm admi who, मुझे पता है क्या तक के फूट यहाँ हफ्ते भर तक नहीं फूट ली राशन पानी के लिए. सबसे बड़ा इम्पैक्ट डी मोनिटाइजेशन का ये है कि लोगों की मंशा, माइंडसेट जो कच्चे का बोलते हैं ना पक्का कच्चा कच्चा बोले तो ब्लैक मनी वो चेंज हो गया है. The gen- and the GST will curb down the generation of black money. Even the small sector, छोटा व्यापारी, मैं कोई बुतुर से हूँ. 60% ऑफ स्पिनिंग मिल कोयम्बतूर में है बाजू में तिरपुर है और सबसे बड़ा कपड़े का मार्केट है मैडम यहाँ पे लेबर नहीं है आज इंडस्ट और डीमोनाइजेशन के बाद महीने डेढ़ महीने के बाद यान का प्राइसेस ऑल टाइम हाई टच हुआ था आफ्टर 2011 कपास का प्राइस 45,000 पर कंडी नीचे नहीं आया है तो लेबर कहाँ गया सुरेश वेर इज द लेबर गॉन फ्रॉम तिरपुर वॉट आर दो पीपल डूइंग लेबर नहीं है यूपी बिहार ओडिशा से जो लेबर आते थे पिछले छह महीने में लेबर नहीं आ रहे हैं उनको उधर अच्छा पे मिल रहा है और अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर टी सेक्टर ऊटी ऊटी का जो टी सेक्टर है बाजू में उनको जो लेबर कम मिलता था सबका बैंक अकाउंट खुल गया है जितना मिलना चाहिए तीन सौ रुपए चार सौ रुपए पर डे उतना मिल रहा है जो जो बड़े बड़े व्यापारी Um, I don't know if it's fair to assume that they've left because they're getting better jobs back in UP and Bihar. I think the job situation is going to be a very big issue in this country, and I think that is going to be actually the single largest driver. And I think that is where uh, the whole country needs to focus on. Every entrepreneur needs to focus on job creation. Every person in bureaucracy, in in so, politics, so everywhere needs to focus. So, Mr. Agarwal's argument of mudra loans going to prospective But, entrepreneurs, do you not believe that's a solution? I don't think those are solutions. I think you know, uh, uh, overall, uh, I think if we focus on the subject at hand, which is mm. demonetization, I think, uh, uh, like I said before, while some good has come out of it, and and possibly more good will come out of it. Yes. Uh, but I think on balance. we also need to look at growth and that growth is the only thing that will provide uh, you know employment will provide other things and the 25 billion that has been lost i think if we can find other ways now to to, to bring it back in uh, to increase the gdp substantially we were the number one okay. growing market in the world and now one. we've been beaten again by china and we've lost our number one position and become number two right right i want to bring in gautam who's on the phone line from vadodara gautam go ahead yeah hi the say first of all let me compliment you for taking up a burning issue everybody everybody you speak to anybody a lower middle class or upper middle class or middle class everybody is suffering because of this thing we don't care we don't care about what exactly is happening as far as all these figures are concerned mr gopal agarwal here okay he's giving certain figures but what about the ground realities can anybody see what's happening everybody is suffering we have to cut down all our i am a retired person I had to cut down everywhere just to see, just to meet two ends, you know. So I personally feel that please forget about all these so-called figures. Come to the ground reality, and we were given, we were asked to wait for six months from right. December. Now what is happening? It's June, and this. Uh, yesterday I went to the bank to pick up some money. There's no money. There's no money. All right. All right. So I, I, I've run out of time, but I will promise you one thing. Like, like I said six months ago, that we are not going to forget, and we will continue to track all of the movement. We will continue to track all of the movement through GST as well, because this affects jobs. If we don't have jobs, we can't buy food. If we can't buy food, yes, inflation is going to come down. That's automatic. And the truth is, we are going through a job crisis. Look at what's happening to the IT industry. Look at what's happening to textiles, to leather, uh, to to Brand the right. restaurant business, to those uh, you know, for no fault of the government, I'll say, to those restaurants. Restaurants that were situated on the highways, which lost their liquor licenses, who had to let go of people. This is a serious crisis, and on this channel, we put this crisis on top.
top priority. Jobs are a problem. There are various things that are adding to the job crisis and we're going to keep a very close eye on it. I invite you at home to get in touch. My contact details are on your screen. If you're facing a challenge of any kind, if you believe there is a problem, if you're retired, if you're a homemaker, if you're middle class, if you're upper class, get in touch. These are stories we have to tell. We have to bring them to the notice of our government so changes can be made. There's no reason to suffer in silence. We will tell your stories on this channel. Thanks for watching.